Hi everyone, I'm Tom, very nice to see you. I'm here today at NT Labs. Whilst you may have perhaps seen this tank before and you may have seen my back, you haven't really got to know me. So uh, the guy said while I was here, if I could jump on camera, just give you a little bit of a talk about the tank, myself, how we got to this place, and then hopefully over the coming months you'll get to see this tank as it evolves. So a lot of you are probably wondering, who's this guy and why is he sat talking about a tank? Well, much like you, I'm a hobbyist. You'll have seen me around on certain social media channels over the years, but at home I've got about five of my own tanks with a whole different array of, uh, of species of fish that I like to keep. And I was really, really quite honoured when NT asked me if I'd give them a hand with this new creation in their reception area. The approach of this tank was something that had to fit the needs of the space and the needs of the business. So we deliberately wanted to keep it relatively low tech, although we do have a very, very nice light on here that I'll get onto in a little bit later. We wanted to keep it low tech, we wanted to keep it manageable, we wanted to keep it something that the team here could get on with whilst doing their full-time jobs. This is the fun bit, that's the work bit. The plants that we've used here are designed to be very, very simple to maintain, will spread under their own, under their own steam and are really going to take you know, an awful lot of punishment. Obviously over the weekend, people aren't in the office, people go on holiday, you need a setup that's going to be able to hold itself together whilst you're away. For a substrate here, we've used uh, aquarium soil. So if you're doing a planted tank, it really is the best way to go. There are various different brands available. In this case, we went with Tropica. It's just one that I've used before and I have a preference for. At Hardscape, we've just stuck with some simple pieces here, a little bit of stone and a little bit of wood not trying to overwhelm it too much with the stone it's very much designed to sit here and anchor everything together we don't want to make it the main feature the feature really is to be the wood the planting and then the guys have selected these little nano fish that will just look in scale with the setup to look at some of the plants in detail right down the front here we've used helanthium helanthium tenellum is a lovely carpeting plant really low tech doesn't need co2 a big worry that a lot of people have here is uh, is the need for injected co2 completely unnecessary with plants like this. They do benefit from, uh, from a good feed. Something like NT Labs Plant Booster course is a way forward there. We've also used quite a few epiphytes in this setup. Those of you new to plants, when we use epiphyte as a term, we mean plants that are attached to something. They're not planted in the soil, they're not planted in the substrate, they're attached. And you'll see here we've used a couple of species of moss. Uh, Christmas moss, uh, a personal favorite of mine, Really, really good for those of you that are considering a breeding program potentially. And mosses give a fantastic location for fish to lay their eggs, as well for young fry to hide to avoid being predated by other species in the tank. You'll also see in here Java fern, Microsorum, to use its binomial. And you'll see a couple of different species in here. We have Narrow, and over here we have uh, Windelof, named after the founder of Tropica, Holger Windelof. Really, really versatile epiphyte. Again, all different shapes and sizes. This one more of a frilly leaf, this one more of a narrow straight leaf. But a great option, again, if you want to do a low-tech tank. They really do do well, just left on their own. Elsewhere in the setup, a few species of Cryptocarini. We've got a few dotted around here, as you'll see. We've got some Albida floating around in here. It looks really, really, really nice. Again, they're a low-tech plant. They actually do well in lower light conditions. And the Crypt family is an incredibly versatile species. You'll see another one at the back, the Crypt Balancei. Balancei is a very, very long-leaved plant, so you can get a good height on it and works really well as a background plant. And last but not least, over at the side here, are our feature plant for this part of the tank. This is Echinodorus, uh, Echinodorus ozolot red. Picked really for two reasons. First of all, it gives us some colour, it gets this lovely red patination across the leaves. And also for a difference of leaf, it's a much broader leaf. A lot of everything else we've used is somewhat narrow in, in structure. This, a bit broader, a bit bigger, filling up some space. Now maintenance here, we're not looking at a huge amount of work. Water changes as you'd expect, given that we've got fish in the tank. But other than that, really, some simple dosing with aquarium fertilizers. So NT Labs Plant Boost here is a great option for you. And really just monitoring, removing any leaves that start to look past their best just helping to make sure that we're getting the absolute best out of this incredible tank. And of course, in order to manage, set up and establish a tank like this, we needed a few helping hands. And uh, this is really where all the magic's hidden away. A whole range of NT Labs products, all of which that have been used to help get this tank to where it is today. We have, of course, our tap water safe, product designed to dechlorinate our water, make it safe for our, our little fishy friends by protecting those beneficial bacteria that we spent so long cultivating in our filter. And on the subject, of course, of beneficial bacteria, we have Filter Starter. 
the CIDMT Labs proprietary blend of microbiological organisms that will help to establish a filter quickly and safely. Plant Boost, as I mentioned, a great choice for those of you that are looking to give your plants that extra kick, that extra little bit of help with growth in order to help them look their best. And of course, liquid CO2, last but not least in our collection. And of course, the last piece that puzzled here is lighting. The part that so often causes a lot of confusion, but I have to say that I think the one that the team have used here is a, a bit of a work of art. This is of course the ONF Flat One Plus 60cm standard LED light. App controlled, giving you some really fancy and really deep control options. You're able to move brightness from 0% right up to 100%. And of course we've even got control of the colour of light from 3000 Kelvin right up to 6500 Kelvin. Really gives you the opportunity to tweak what you need be it a high-tech tank, a low-tech tank, or indeed you just want to sit and observe your fish in a very, very low light level. Now, a few species in here, some favourites of mine I must admit. First of all, the Harlequin Rasbora, an absolutely gorgeous species, really hardy, gets to a nice size, best kept in large groups, the bigger the better really, certainly a minimum of six to eight. These are only babies, they've got some room to grow yet. We'll take a huge variety of water parameters. I keep these at home in my normal tap water. They'll do really well here in this soft setup as well, just to give you that flexibility. These amazing guys here with the yellow fins, these are known as fork tail pseudomugils. Uh, Pseudomugil vercatus is their correct name. A really, really nice species from Australasia. I think of Papua New Guinea. Someone, of course, will pick me up if I'm wrong. Again, a really nice shoaling species. The males have these really intricate fins and we we'll use them to display to each other to fight for dominance and then show who is, the, uh, who is the biggest boy in the tank. Some interest further down, although right now they're, they're currently surfing on the glass, is we have Corydorus sterbi, or sterbi cori, as you'll also hear them called. A nice sized Corydorus, they don't get too big, somewhere around about two and a half to three inches. Again, do really well kept in a group, and these really will add some character. Absolutely fine in this tank because we've got this nice soft sole substrate. Sand would also work perfectly well. I would avoid them though if you've got a gravel bottomed or bare bottomed tank. And the reason for that is these guys forage along the floor looking for food. They'll take in substrate and they'll pass it through their gills. With a sand or with a fine soil they can get that motion passing through. If you try and do that with gravel it's a little bit like you or I trying to snort a marble. It really isn't going to be comfortable. And hiding at the back, not too easily seen but they found a nice corner to hide in, are the ubiquitous Cardinal Tetra. Probably a mainstay of the hobby, certainly for a long, long time. And when kept in soft conditions like this and under a good light like this, you get some absolutely fantastic colour displays with that bright blue stripe running front to back. Another shoaling species like the others that are being kept in this tank, they do like to hang around together and just make themselves feel a little bit safer and a little bit more comfortable. All these species, really simple to care for, really, really enjoyable to sit and watch and uh, an absolute fantastic choice for this size of tank. And of course with our fish in situ, the last part of the puzzle here is making sure that they're kept fed. NT Labs of course in their range have a, a selection of different foods, all of which are being used somewhere in this aquarium as part of a nice, varied, moderate diet that gives all the essentials. First of all, and a, a, a stalwart in my house, NT Labs Probiotic Tropical. This is a great food, it's a small pellet between 0.8 and 1.2 millimetres. Absolutely packed full of all sorts of goodness, all sorts of nutrients, vitamins, and things that your fish are really, really going to take to. And I'm yet to find a fish that won't actively eat this stuff as soon as it appears in the water. NT Labs Micro Crumb, great for those very, very, very small fish. You're right down here at a 0.2 mil, that's a 200 micron particle size. Fantastic if you're dealing with things like Nano Rasbora or other very, very small species of fish that perhaps find the larger products a little bit too difficult but again, packed full of all the same goodness that you'll find in all the other NT Labs products, and perfect for those small amounts. We also have the NT Labs Nano Tropical Pellet, here sitting at around 0.8 millimeters in size. This is absolutely fantastic for species such as Betta, Gourami, um, in fact, even fish down the bottom of tanks such as Cory, I've had come chasing after this quite happily when the opportunity presents itself. And last, but by no means least, the NT Labs Algae Wafers. The thing I like about these is they're a really nice size. They're not too big. Sometimes you see algae wafers and they're absolutely massive. And unless you've got plenty of fish that are going to eat them, they're often far too large. The NT at 13 mil, I find to be a really, really nice size. Great to include for those that have got omnivorous fish or indeed herbivorous fish. 
fantastic piece of, uh, of food to keep in your cabinet and really just have in rotation amongst other products. So there we are everyone, I hope you've enjoyed this quick whistle stop tour through this wonderful little aquarium here at NT Labs HQ. The plan is that over the coming months this tank will continue to evolve, continue to grow, continue to develop and uh, we'll be able to bring you more content as we move along, showing you how we've looked after the plants, how we've evolved the scape and uh, how we've really made it into our own. Thank you.